The Moon Drop May. Let's talk about it. This IM was sent out to me by Apos Audio. I wanted to sincerely appreciate them for sending me stuff. It's always fun to review products with no hassle. All right, let's look at the box. It's a nice little black and white waifu. Nothing too exciting. The back has some graphs on it, but uh, you know, there you go. If we look at the shell, the shell is funny. It's actually extremely small, but very comfortable. It has a nice little nozzle, pretty small. Nice little lip around it, thin, not very wide, not very tall. It, that might be a concern to some people that it is so small. I think the faceplate itself is beautiful. But overall, I think if you're looking for a slight earphone, this could be perfect because it's very tiny in ear and extremely comfortable depending on what you need. The case is nice. It has a little, you know, little tie and a little clothespin for DSP. This only comes in DSP. Um, it has some ear tips, fine selection of ear tips. Let's look at the cable. It's very similar to the, D the DSP cable that Moondrop has. I think it's, I wanna say it's almost exactly the same one that's on the desk, say branding. Um, you know, the chin slider doesn't move. The Y splits nice. The cable feels really plush in hands. It says DSP on the end. Overall, nice. How does this IEM sound? It sounds nice. It sounds clear, but it has some issues in the treble. It's not the most perfect sound that I would appreciate. And on the DSP settings, I think it doesn't really come across to me as nice as I, as I like the Blessing uh, 2 Dust from Critical. And so I think the problem I have with this is that it's just kind of an okay IEM and not exactly super cheap and not exactly super expensive, but it's very well packaged and a nice overall tiny IEM that I think is a really beautiful IEM. But how does it sound? Well, let's look at some graphs and talk about it and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, so we look at this graph and it's a overall nice looking graph. It's overall pretty good. It has a nice base shelf. The base shelf is pretty nice. Upper mids are a little bit high for my taking, but overall it's a really nice sounding IEM in the analog, in an analog cable. And that's kind of what I would prefer. I personally think uh, sometimes DSP can be really good and sometimes it's not. And for me, in this case, it's not that great. I tried messing around the settings and off my phone, it's pretty good, but I actually think this is a little bit better analog, but it does give you that option where it's really easy to swap if you need to. I want to compare this to a few other IEMs from Moondrop and kind of share where these kind of face. I mean, this is about $65 right now. You can buy that on APOS. If you look at the Stellaris, I did not like the Stellaris. Like if you look at this, the treble here is kind of peaky here. There's this huge one, like 2K peak. The base is lean. The Stellaris kind of was one of those IEMs that I just can't really recommend it when there's so many other IEMs that are more neutral. It's like one of those IEMs that's supposed to be fun, but it just sounds a little bit weird for me. And I mean, you might like it, but for me, it, it just didn't work. And it's not something I can recommend. Now, if you look at the, the Starfield 2, I thought the Starfield 2 was pretty smooth, pretty good. Not a bad overall set. It was a little bit bright, but it was pretty nice. Um, and I think, you know, these two kind of trade blows, but I think the May for me is a lot better. It's a lot cleaner and it's a nice overall sound and not bad. I think if you want to invest a little bit more money, the Aria 2 is a little bit better. It is able to be gotten without DSP cable if that's what you're going for. I like the sound signature of the Aria 2. I think it's a lot like the Kato. I think it's a lot kind of like a cheaper Kato. I think it's really nice. I think it's really smooth. I think if you're willing to pay a little bit more money, that might be the better bargain. Now, again, the May. It's not problematic because it has bad packaging or, or it sounds bad. It's just in kind of this weird standpoint where like, is it a really, a really true budget set or is it really an end game set? It's kind of in that middle ground in between beater set and really good set. 
And that's kind of its problem. Not that it's a bad set, just kind of that's sort of middling. Like if you look at the 7 Hertz Critical Zero 2, and if you're just after a DSP, not a DSP, but an analog IM, I think that might be the better way to go and what I would recommend. Now fit on the May, I think is a little bit more comfortable. But if you're just concerned about price, the Zero 2 comes in a bunch of different colors and it's pretty cheap. It's like around 20 to $25 depending. That might be the way to go. Now with the May, I did try some EQ to my target and I did like it a lot better. I did think it fixed the mids just a little bit, kind of tweaked them just enough to make them a little bit more grounded. And it was a better overall experience for me. Again, not a bad IEM, but one that kind of just sort of competes with its peers and doesn't really dominate them. And it's just kind of okay for the price. All right, so let's rank this thing up. The Moondrop May, nice, solid, strong uh, C, one star. I think it's worth its price because it has good accessories, but it's not something that's mind-bogglingly amazing, but it's, it's a acceptable IEM, especially for people that want a better bass shelf. It has nice mids. It has actually pretty good bass for all things considering, but its highs get a pretty bad ding for me. There's also some weird tonality to me, but it has nice warmth and note weight to it, but it doesn't image that well. Its soundstage is just kind of, it's just kind of okay. Like I think there's other IMs at this price point, like maybe the Canera Celeste Waver and Abyss that might be on par with it for sound. If you just want to talk raw sound quality, and that's that's kind of the problem with this hobby is that you'll get a lot of IEMs that are really close to each other and that's that's kind of the issue Moondrop May definite good IEM I like it I like the price I think it's worth it but I just don't think it's perfect for what it is the Moondrop May she's pretty she sounds pretty good but it's just also kind of expensive it's kind of falls into that ground of mid-fi hell for me but if you're you know if you only can afford this amount this might be a really good set to go especially if you have small ears and you want the dsp cable it's not a bad iem it sounds good as a neat nice little pouch good accessories good cable really no problems with it and it go it gets a clear recommendation from me and i think it'd be something that could work for a lot of people. I like this IEM and I want to thank APOS for sending this out for me to check it out and do a quick review on this. I think it's one of those things that, you know, I, I don't know. I would rec if you're, if you're interested in this IEM, I would recommend it, but I don't think it's something that you absolutely have to go for. You're still here. It's over. Go home, go watch another IEM video. It's done, that's the entire video. What more do you want?